Hey gang, welcome back to another video. So after a recent trip to New Orleans and a visit to a local cemetery, I decided that the family crypt build wasn't quite done and needed a bit of fencing to really achieve the look I was going for. So in this video, I'm going to be taking it back to basics and build a haunt fence. So let's get to it. This project really started when I saw this finial during a cemetery tour. So I sent this photo to Zach at Big Fred's Customs and asked him to 3D model it for the project. And this is what he sent me. Pretty spot on, I'd say. So with the file in hand, I 3D printed myself a bunch of them and then gave them a quick run through my washing station to remove any excess resin. Then I removed the support materials and ran them in batches through the UV curing process. And then they were ready to be turned into fence posts. Since I'll be going heavy on the texture, I'm not concerned about any marks left behind from support materials and can get right to gluing them into some half inch PVC pipe. While I waited for the glue to set, I cut down some 1x2 furring strips into the widths I'd need for this fence and got to marking the location of all the holes I'll need to drill. I'm using a Forstner bit in my cordless drill, but I'd suggest doing this step in a drill press if you have access to one. I'll be using these 1 inch wood screws to hold the pipes in place, but before I get to that, I'll pre-drill all of my screw holes to prevent the wood from cracking. This is definitely one of those steps that you don't want to skip over, since these furring strips can be a bit temperamental. This may also explain why they're so affordable. With all my holes drilled, it's time to plan out the layout of the crossbars. This is one of those things that I needed to see in relation to the crypt to make sure that the proportions were right. It was at this point that I realized I needed a bit more variety. So imagine you're watching me drill more holes, adding in shorter posts, and finalizing their positions with those one inch screws. Because I want this to pack flat for storage, I 3D modeled and printed these corner pieces. They'll be permanently attached to the front section and will be temporarily held in place with a small screw on the side pieces. That way it can be stored flat against a wall where it'll be out of the way. Now that the fence is fully constructed, it's time for paint, starting with a bit of rubberized undercoating spray. Now this not only gives great texture, but it also protects the wood from moisture. Although you'll definitely want to be sure to wear a respirator and work in a well-ventilated place should you choose to go this route. Although you definitely can achieve a similar look using textured spray paint. After coating the entire fence, I let it dry for a bit before doing a bit of fast rust paint. I grabbed a spray bottle of water and a rust colored spray paint and alternated between water and paint to give it a mottled finish. This technique is very similar to how I texture tombstones. The paint won't stick to the water droplets and will get rinsed away when more water is applied. So you end up with a speckled appearance that will absolutely pass the 10 foot test. Now it's not the most dynamic looking rust paint job, but considering how uniform the rust looked on the fences in New Orleans and the fact that this will mainly be seen in the dark, it's a great quick technique. I have a few other rust paint videos that I'll link in the video description if you're looking for something a bit more realistic. But for now, the only thing left to do was to put it in place in front of the crypt. Now the only thing left to do is a bit of set dressing, maybe add in some extra dead leaves or a bit of Spanish moss to make it look like it's been there for a while. 
but I won't make you watch me do that. As always, be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already, but most importantly, go make something. <laughs>